let's let's talk about the impact of this environment and what you are seeing from your customers. And I'm particularly curious about the savings rate, right? You say that the balances are still relatively strong, um, but given the inflationary environment, how quickly might that strength erode? How much confidence does that give you? John, first, thanks for having me. And I think it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see. You know, we were talking just recently with our retail team about what are we seeing in balances? And the word he used are so is solid. Our solid balances are still higher than they were uh, pre-pandemic, uh, although at some of the lower socioeconomic uh, sectors, you could see more more stress there because of inflation, et cetera. But really, the balances continue to be strong on the consumer side. We've seen good interchange activity, not so much because of increased numbers of transactions, because but because at the average level, average price and size of those transactions is higher. That's probably related at least some for inflation. So I think the infl what we're seeing from the consumers uh, is good so far, and uh, we'll see how it goes as, as it continues on. I wonder, Phil, about a bifurcation that I have a sense of, and you'd have a better sense than I would, during this particular economic turbulence, where because inflation is driving it so much, uh, the, the working class, maybe lower middle class, a consumer is struggling a lot more than others in the marketplace. Now, how might that, am I right about that, first of all, and then how might that play out uh, in consumer activity for the rest of the year? Well, I think it makes sense what you're saying. Just the, the arithmetic of it is that people that have less resources are gonna be impacted more by this inflationary cycle. And I think that's something that we need to be cognizant of and concerned about. One of the things that we've done is we've helped with recently in what we call an overdraft, overdraft grace product, which uh, really for $100 and under, you can get a free overdraft in, in our company. And we've had 60,000 uh, families that have taken advantage of that. And so people are using that as they need to pay these higher prices. So you've got to make sure that your product set is responsive to all segments of the market, which would include that lower segment. But I think what you're saying makes sense, that there'll be some more pressure there. I think if you look on the commercial side of the business, uh, what we're really hearing, though, is that the economy in Texas, where we operate, is solid. In fact, I'd say it's really strong. Uh, we don't hear conversation about recession. We don't really hear that much uh, about inflation. What we really hear from Main Street is really what's going on with labor? Where do I get the next, per next person to hire? How much am I going to have to pay them? And what's the supply chain bump going to be next? Okay. Uh, let me ask you sort of in between. I guess this is still a little bit more consumer, but having to do with mortgages, right? And the impact of both interest rates and potentially softening in real estate values. Are you seeing people tapping into their equity as much as eagerly? And how do you expect that to shift if uh, current trends continue throughout the rest of 2022? Interesting. You know, we are seeing more uh, activity around home equity lending, home, uh, home equity line of credit, also home improvement. So people are, are tapping into equity, using it to improve their homes because with home prices, it's getting harder and harder to get homes and with, with interest rates going up, it makes it more difficult. So we've seen a tremendous increase in our growth in consumer related to home equity. And I think you're right also about housing. We're starting to see that is one segment that is slowing some. I think our home building customers in North Texas were, were telling me recently that we wanna see actually some slowdown in that because it's they need time to catch up. Mm. You know, time to build a house in Texas has gone from about 120 days to 210. So you're, you're going to see some slowness in the activity around housing, and we're beginning to see that today. What indications would you have if the labor picture is getting healthier? Uh, I don't want to say better because, hey, if you're a worker, you like those higher wages, you want to be in high demand, but if you're an employer, like you were just talking about, your commercial folks are saying, hey, how long am I going to have to pay top dollar for labor? What, what are you seeing locally that's giving you an indication of which way that's trending? Yeah. You know, what we're seeing individually as a company, what we're hearing others talk about is, is the, the price of labor. What are we seeing in terms of increases in merit pools? Our increases in May were the highest we've ever had historically in our company. 
We raised minimum wage from $15 to $20 at the beginning of the year. That's a 33% increase. So I don't think we've touched bottom yet. One thing that we have seen recently, though, is we have seen numbers of applications increasing. So that, at least to me, is a little bit of an optimistic sign. All right. Well, Phil Green of Colin Frost Bankers with that local insight. Very helpful. Thank you.